Hello everyone and welcome to Direct Editing Tools. My name is Sarah Hollett and I'm an application engineer here with CATI. Direct Editing Tools are very powerful and fast and easy to use, so I'm very excited to talk to you about them today. Before I get started, I'd like to briefly tell you about CATI. We really pride ourselves on being America's first SOLIDWORKS partner starting in 1992 but we use SOLIDWORKS as part of a larger mission, which is to help companies make better products through technology. We provide a full product development portfolio and the support and training to make the most of it. That includes the design, simulation, manufacturing, and the PLM software from Dassault System and Partners. We utilize 3D printers and scanners from Stratasys Creaform and a few others. We even provide expert consulting and service work using tools like Abacus and Katia, along with the latest in 3D printers, so you can enjoy the benefits of these technologies right when you need them. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into direct editing tools. On the agenda for today, we're going to be talking about what is direct editing. You know, what does that mean? And when do, when do we use it? And then I'm going to talk about the importance of using your import diagnostic option. And selection sets in there. It's a little extra tool I'm throwing in there. It's not part of direct editing, but I really like to use it um, in conjunction with my direct editing tools. And then, of course, our direct editing tools, we're going to talk about their location, you know, what they do, and how, how to use them. So what is direct editing? This is making edits by working directly with the model's geometry from the graphics window. And when we do that, we do that a lot with imported files. Now we see this used because, and here's the why, when we have imported files, we don't have any features to work with. So no parametric data for us to edit, no sketches to redimension, no extrudes to flip, you know, so we only can work with the information that we have, which is the imported geometry. Now, direct editing tools work um, with all kinds of files, so not just imported files. It also works with, you know, regular native files. So we can use this too. Say we've got a really long feature manager tree, and we're having trouble making edits, you know, higher up in the tree because child features keep breaking, or you keep getting errors. Well, then maybe it's time to check out a direct editing tool to make that change so we're not messing with the order or any references that are being used further up the tree. Okay, let's take a look at where the direct editing tab's located. Now, if you don't have it activated, you won't see this on your command manager, so you'll right-click your command manager, go to the tabs, and activate the direct editing tab. Now here are the tools that we are going to focus on. We've got the move face, move copy bodies, delete keep body, delete face, split, and combine. We've got six tools here, so I'm going to show you how each of them work uh, and a little example on how to use them. Okay. Now all of these tools are actually located through uh, located in different areas of SolidWorks, but this has been provided, this direct editing tab has been provided to give you quick access to all of these direct editing tools. So I like to utilize this editing tab versus going to our search commands and searching for each and every one of these tools. Okay. Now, if you're getting ready to use your editing tools, you might be opening up an imported file, and the first thing you might see is this message. Do you wish to run import diagnostics on this part? And the answer is, yes, you do. Please don't X out of it. Please don't use the don't show again. This is SOLIDWORKS way of telling you that it needs to scan your part to make sure that whatever data you're importing is being translated correctly. So very, very important here. So this is a tip when just getting started to always run that import diagnostic scans for errors, and then it also attempts to heal them all. So it looks for faulty surfaces, it looks for where boundaries don't quite meet, and it'll extend those surfaces so that it can create a closed body. Uh, if it doesn't create a closed body, then we're working with a surface body, and you might not know that there's an issue until you get later on 
in your modeling and something breaks or you go to export it and it tells you you're for, you don't have a closed body or invalid geometry. So it's really important you do that very first before any edits. Now, if you start to make edits and you save your part, you cannot use import diagnostic. That is the point of no return after that. So use that, use import diagnostics first. If it doesn't automatically show up, when you open up your imported file, you can go to your tools, evaluate, and then you can go to your import diagnostic and it will run through again. Okay, so very, very important. Now that we've got um, the import diagnostic done, let's take a look at our very first tool. Okay, the first tool I'm gonna cover is move face. And this is when you just grab a face in your model and then you can specify a distance you can choose a plane for direction, or you can select an entity like an edge or axis, and you can rotate about it. And it does move face just three different, uh, three different things. So the first one is offset. Selected the outside surface, and it offsets that a certain distance. And you can go to the outside, or you can bring it towards the inside. We have translate, where you can use this triad to push and pull a surface, or you can also just type in a distance. And then here we have rotate. So you can use the triad again to click and drag and rotate that face, or you can also use some sort of axis or edge. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example here. So now you can see I'm working with an imported file. I have nothing in my feature manager tree. But the first thing I wanna point out is my selection sets. Okay, I've grouped together these surfaces so that when I go to make my direct edits, I can just grab right from my feature manager tree. I'm gonna pop back to my PowerPoint for a second. Selection sets allow you to choose, you know, faces, entities, features, or components if you're working in an assembly and group them together as a single set. Now, if you have a model where you are making the same selections, over and over again, I recommend trying out using trying out selection sets. And since they work at the part level and the assembly level, they're very versatile. You can use them in appearances, hiding and showing components, not just in the editing command. So there's lots of versatility when using selection sets. Now, if you want to know a little bit more about selection sets, you can read a blog I posted that goes into further detail, and that's located on our CATI website. Let's get back to our example. Now, I'm gonna show you how to make selection sets. You know, without any commands open, you just select the faces you wanna to group together, and then right click on them to access the save selection option. You can add to an existing set if you missed a face, or you can create a new one. Now that we have them made, we are going to go to our direct editing tab and use them in our move face command. Now I've selected all these inside faces and I wanna make them larger. So I'm gonna choose the offset option. And then when I look into my graphics window, I can see that my, um, my preview is going to the inside. So to make them larger, I'm going to use that flip direction option and then just accept those changes. Very fast, very simple. Now let's look at translate. Just watch how when you grab the selection set, it populates all the faces. And when you click and drag, you can see all the surrounding faces are extending to meet, um, and keep, extending to meet the other faces that we're dragging out and keep the body closed. We're gonna look at the other side as well. So I'm gonna use a selection set again Click and drag, and we can see all those faces moving to me are extending faces. And we're gonna look at one more translate. Now I'm gonna grab some more faces here. Now I'm grabbing the inside faces and the outside faces to keep that thickness when I, when I translate these down the Y. Now you can see all of our move faces are in our feature tree. So if you needed to make configurations or if you needed to undo them, they're right there in your feature tree. These, per these changes don't have to be permanent. We just looked at offset and translate and the real power behind these tools is its ability 
to extend any of those surrounding surfaces to keep our body closed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at rotate. Now you can use this triad to adjust the angle of a surface or you can grab multiple surfaces. Okay, I've used in this example multiple surfaces and this is where our selection sets really come in handy because I've got so many faces in here that if I were to make a mistake in my move face command, it would either fail or um, I'd have to start over, start my selections over. Now, even though this is an imported body for my axis to rotate about, I'm going to use my temporary axes. So SOLIDWORKS still can recognize those cylindrical surfaces and generate these temporary axes for us to use. Less design work for us and it's very, very fast. Now we can adjust these angles. So we can see our, in our preview that it's grabbing all of those faces and rotating it around that axis that goes right through that bottom cylinder. Very fast, no redesigning. We didn't have to make any new sketches. Now this is also great for configurations or if you have a design change that you need to make, you can use this move face to rotate or reorient your part without having to go through and redo your sketching or create more you know, reference geometry and whatnot. Now we just went over all the move face commands. Now we're gonna take a look at some of our other direct editing tools. Now we're gonna go a little bit out of order because the move copy bodies, delete keep bodies and combine, I would like to use multiple bodies. Combine, you will need multiple bodies. So I'd like to start by using the split command so we know how to take one model and break it down into multiple parts before we move on to the other direct editing commands. The split command creates multiple bodies from a single body by using a trim tool. And then once you split the body, you can use those bodies to either save them out as individual part files or you can still save them in one individual file. We have three options when it comes to trim tools. First one is going to be a sketch. You create a sketch and it projects through the body and that's where it splits your, splits your model. Then we have planes and I'm using our primary planes but you can also use reference planes. And I just, want to, I just want to point out here that I have two planes showing in this example. You can select multiple planes. You can select multiple trim tools within your split command. So you don't have to break it up into multiple commands. And then we've got surfaces. So you can use a planar or a curved surface to split your command or to split your part. Here I have just a sketch on the bottom of this model and I'm going to use it to split these lug mounts off this body. So I'm going to take that sketch and you can see they're, they're in different areas, but I can still use them as one, as one trim tool. And now we can just use that to split the lug mounts off. Sketch is already selected and then you will just ask it to cut the part. Now you'll notice there are four resulting bodies because one of my sketch or one of my trim tools actually cuts the cylinder that's at the very top. And we don't want that, which is fine because from here we're going to use our property window to select which bodies we want, or you can use the graphics window. So just because it's resulting in more bodies than you want, you don't have to use the, all of those. You can just select the ones you want. Once you have your item split, we can now try to move it or get rid of it. And that's where I'm going to use my delete keep bodies. Now it's pretty straightforward. It lets you delete or keep a solid body or, su or surface body. But where this is different here, I mean, graphically, you could get the same result using the hide show bodies. But if you go to do a mass calculation, it's not going to exclude that body. So that's why we weren't, we're going to want to use that delete body. And again, it's not permanent because it's a feature in your tree. So you can use your rollback bar, undo or delete it all together. Let's get rid of this mounting lug here. And this is very straightforward. This, you can see there's not a lot of options here in this tool. So just select your body and go ahead and say, okay. And it's that simple. We have this resulting geometry here and we wanna go ahead and get rid of that. Delete face allows us to remove faces and either just delete them, delete and patch or delete and fill. 
Now, if you were to just delete a surf or surface from a solid body, it is going to create a surface body, which is great if you want to do surface modeling. Not so great if you want to keep solid modeling. So just keep that in mind because if you delete even just a small, you know, maybe just a small surface and you don't patch it or you don't fill it, you're going to be working with the surface body. Now, delete and patch allows you to take the faces that you want to get rid of and then it'll get smoothed over by the surrounding faces. Delete and fill allows you to replace faces. So if you've got some fillets coming together uh, in a corner or something and the faces don't look quite right or the edges don't, you can delete them and then it'll fill them back in and create it with one face. Let's get rid of that protrusion that's coming off the cylinder. And we can just use that delete face. We can use selection sets again, of course. Grab my selection set and then delete and patch. It's fast, it's simple, and it's like it never happens. You can't even tell that that protrusion used to be there. Move copy bodies. Now, it sounds really simple. You move or copy a solid body or surface body, but we have lots of options and lots of uh, flexibility within this tool. You can translate and copy. So you can translate in X, Y, and Z. And with any of these, you can also copy at the same time. So if you want to translate in the X or what, or in the X, Y, or Z, and you tell it you want a couple more instances, it will also create those copies in that direction. You can do the same thing when you rotate. So you can click and drag on the triad to a certain angle, or you can type an angle in. And then you also have the option to use mate constraints. So you have all of the standard mate options so that you can reorient a body in relation to another body or entities. Looking at a new model here, we are going to take this area that I've cut off. So I've used a split a splitting plane and the split tool to cut this end off of the bracket. And I've got two solid bodies, so now I can use our move copy bodies command. I want to reorient this so it's facing upwards. So there's lots of options down towards the bottom, and this is how you toggle between move, toggle between translate, rotate, and constraints. Choose the body that you want to copy, and once I activate the rotate, you can choose an edge, a or an edge, a point, a vertice to rotate around. I'm going to use this inside edge to rotate it about. And then to get it to flip, in order to get it to flip to the top, we're going to do 180 degrees. And our preview looks good, so we're going to say OK. Now we can use the constraints to move this and get this end of the bracket lined up. Choose the same body and use your right click efficiencies to get down to your mate settings. And then once I select these two faces, it automatically will take me into the tangent uh, option there. And then you can click add and add multiple mates using one command. So you don't have to open the command again. Now that I've got it lined up, I can go ahead and exit out of my tool. The combine command allows us to take two or more bodies and create a single body or just another solid body part. Here I've got an example of two separate bodies, the gray and the brown parts. And using uh, the combine command, we can either add them together to create one solid body and all of the geometry is intact. We can subtract one body from the other. And we can also find common. Now, this is the volume that they share, where they intersect. And this allows you to create some very unique looking pieces and get some unique geometry without having to do a lot of advanced modeling. We have that bracket that we split in two. And now we want to create it so that we've got one solid part. So if you're manufacturing or you're going to use a simulation, you're going to have to put your bodies back together to use it as one body. So now I'm just going to combine it and using the add option, you can just select the bodies you'd like to add and then take a look at the preview. It'll show you, you know, one smooth, continuous body. And then when you say OK, you get your final result. And this is the last tool we're going over today. 
So let's do a quick review. We're going to go over all the tools we covered. So the very first one was the move face, pushing and pulling of faces. It extends the surrounding faces. So it makes making some of these like extending, you know, lengthening items or tilting a surface really fast and easy. Selection sets, this is a great trick to use when you have a lot of faces, entities that you're selecting over and over again. So just try to utilize that and you can cut some time off of your design work because you're not making so many selections each and every time you go to do, uh, you know, an edit. Then we have the split. Another cool tip or trick about this split tool is that the individual bodies, once you cut them, you have the ability to save them out as individual, individual part files right from that tool. And then you can use multiple trim, uh, trim tools to create multiple solid bodies at one time. Delete keep bodies, pretty simple. You can delete or keep a body, but just to remember instead of hiding a body, if you delete the body, you're able to do a calculation without having the hidden body change your results. Okay, so deleting the body will make sure that that body is no longer going to be incorporated into any of those calculations. But because it's still a feature, you can go back and get that body if you need to, or you can use it for configurations. Delete face, you can delete, delete and patch, delete and fill. Delete and patch, delete and fill are really powerful tools because it allows you to recreate you know, a surface without really having to do any modeling work. You're just selecting faces. And then if you delete a face from a, from a solid body, you get yourself um, a surface body. And now you can go right into surface modeling. And then we have the combine. You can create one single part. Say you've cut your part all up. Now you can bring it together and create one part. You can also get common, which is a really neat part of the combine tool because it just allows you to get the area where these two parts overlap. And it gives you some really unique shapes without having to do any complicated uh, design modeling. And this is all I have for today. So hopefully you found something useful or something new that you didn't know about um, in the information today. And these are, model, these are commands that you might not use every single day or in every single model, but there are going to be times where you're really happy that these are available and that you remembered them. Thank you everyone for your attention today and have a great rest of your day.